In this video, I want to say a few things about how a simple minimal somalic clause is uh, constructed, uh, how it's built. Uh, a minimal English clause usually contains at least two words, a subject and a predicate. Uh, the subject can be a pronoun or a noun, usually, and the predicate then is uh, normally a verb. And we have three different examples of that here. Uh, but a Somali minimal clause uh, differs a bit from an English one. So a Somali minimal clause usually contains three things. Something called a sentence particle uh, that I'll say more about uh, in a little while. And then a subject pronoun, very similar to the first example we had in English, she laughed. And a predicate, normally a verb, like the law, all the examples we, we saw in English with laughed and other verbs. Uh, so this first part of a minimal Somali clause, a sentence particle. What is that? What is a sentence particle? Well, it is something that uh, could be called a clausal adverb. Uh, English has some of those Scandinavian languages like Swedish, uh, Norwegian, Danish uh, has quite a few of those. Um, but they still um, convey different meanings from the ones in Somali. So what we have in, in English is uh, not, that tells us that the clause is negative. We have things like surely, surely um, probably, um, <clears throat> and other little adverbs that tell us something about the probability of, of the content of, of the clause. But what is typical for these clausal adverbs is that they um, modify the meaning of the whole clause. They tell us something about the general um, uh, meaning of, of the whole clause uh, and how this meaning of the whole clause relates to reality or to the world. So um, <clears throat> what we have in Somali are words that classify sentences into different types. And first of all, we have a very, very common little word in Somali, wa, that basically tells us that the clause is uh, something that we either claim or that we ask for information about. So wa is most often encountered in, in declarative clauses, but also in, in uh, questions with WH words, what and why and things like that. Uh, and then there is a number of other uh, sentence particles in Somali. Uh, and here are some of those. Uh, there is a ma uh, that doesn't necessarily necessarily have a high tone uh, that uh, tells us that the clause is a yes no question that has to be answered with yes or no uh, and there is a different ma that always has a high tone that uh, uh, expresses negative uh, statements negative declarative clauses and the difference between these two ma is partly in, in whether it has a high tone or not, but it's also in the form of the verb. So one goes with the real uh, uh, action verbs, and the other one goes with the unreal action uh, verb forms. Uh, there is a ha that also has two different meanings, depending on whether there is a tone or there isn't a tone on on ha. And uh, in Somali grammar, these little words are uh, 
generally called sentence type particles um, as they they tell us something about the type of sentence we are dealing with um, but there are also uh, three other little words that are sentence particles but they have a different function they put a noun or a noun phrase in focus they put these nouns or noun phrases in the foreground of the clause. Uh, first, there are two, ba and aya, that are synonymous. Uh, and they tell us that the preceding noun or noun phrase is focused, is kind of uh, made more important, put in the foreground in the clause. And then there is waha that tells us that the last noun or noun phrase in the sentence is in focus. And these three little particles are called then focus particles. But focus particles are a subcategory of, of sentence particles. So there are two subcategories of sentence particles. There are the sentence type particles, and then there are the focus particles. So, um, first, Somali clause, minimal clause, contains one of those sentence particles, but right after the sentence particle, we also have a subject pronoun. And uh, here are the English subject pronouns I, you, she, he, it, we, you, they. And they are organized in this table according to person, first, second, and third person, and then singular and plural, uh, as, as is the tradition. And uh, if we put the Somali subject pronouns that are the most common ones, there are a few others, but these are the most common ones, we see that um, there is... Um, a common form for the singular and the plural. Uh, it's a similar situation to the second person in English where you can be both singular and plural uh, depending on the context. We have the same situation for the first person in, in Somali so that an, an can be both I and we depending on the context. And in the third person it's uh, I, uh, she that can also uh, mean they or yeah depending on the context this is the situation similar to also some uh, languages um, like uh, German uh, and then how do we build a simple smaller clause out of these three uh, constituents Sen sentence particles, subject pronoun, and predicate. If we uh, compare with an English minimal simple clause, she arrived, uh, that contains a subject and a predicate. The subject is a pronoun. Uh, we then have to start in Somali with this sentence particle that tells us that this is um, something we claim uh, so it's it's an affirmative um, statement uh, wa gives us this information that it's an affirmative uh, declarative clause and then we have to use a pronoun a she and then the predicate verb meet meaning arrived so this clause then consists of these three words in Somali wa timit if in English we would like to have a noun as the subject amina uh, in the same clause we would take away the pronoun and say then Amina arrived. Uh, but in Somali, 
the subject pronoun is an obligatory part of a minimal clause. So uh, we can't take the pronoun away in Somali. We have to keep it uh, as it's one of the basic constituents of a clause. So we simply add the noun at the beginning of the clause. Amina wa aitimit. And these three constituents, sentence, particle, subject, pronoun, and predicates, most of them verb then, uh, will, will practically always uh, be present. Uh, if we add something more, like an object at the end of the clause, we could get something like Amina wa'i koreisa bu. Amina is writing a book. Uh, but here it would probably be very, or it is very common to uh, substitute the sentence type particle, wa, with the focus particle, waha. Uh, and by doing that, we would add uh, focus to the final noun or noun phrase of, of the clause. That is the book. So we would, in English, express this by, by putting some emphasis on the word book. Uh, Amna is writing a book. It doesn't have to be a very big emphasis. Uh, so, so we are probably not very much aware of, of having that emphasis. Uh, but in Somali, this emphasis is extreme. So in this type of, of uh, clause where there is uh, an object at the end, there will, uh, in most instances, be this uh, focus particle uh, pointing at this uh, object noun at the end of the clause, uh, foregrounding it, uh, making it a little bit more prominent. Uh, so that was the end of this presentation and uh, of course there is a lot more to say about different kinds of sentence type particles, focus particles, uh, the use of the subject pronouns and, and all these different kinds and types of clauses that are marked with the different uh, marked by the different sentence type particles like questions and uh, commands and so on. And then, of course, more complex clauses. There is really a lot to say about more um, complex clauses with more constituents and subordinate clauses and so on.